Moose reveals the original plans for the TNA title. FTR, Cash Wheeler, and Dax Harwood remain unsigned, and they are excited to wrestle elsewhere, and the North are on their list. The Rascals issue an open challenge for Slammiversary. I give my Slammiversary predictions, and I discuss a really, really dumb comment. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Folks, thanks for joining me today. I'm Lewis Carlin. This is Shooting Up North. Moose revealed the original plans for the TNA title, and it wasn't him make self-proclaiming himself as a TNA champion. At the pay-per-view, at the TNA pay-per-view that never happened, uh, There's No Place Like Home, uh, was unfortunately canceled because of the COVID-19. Uh, they were, the main event, and they were going to announce this apparently on social media, the main event was going to be a King of the Mountain match that Moose was going to be involved in, and it was going to be for the TNA Heavyweight Championship. And Moose, of course, was scheduled to win that. And unfortunately, um, as I said, because of COVID-19, that never happened. So they decided to really alter the plans and go with the storyline of Moose self-proclaiming himself as the TNA Heavyweight Champion. I, I think, you know, I think they could have done it the other way. I kind of like the, the way that they were going to do it. You know what? I know at Rebellion he showed up and, uh, again, self-proclaimed himself the TNA champion. They could have had a match at Rebellion. That would have made it a lot more interesting. They could have had a match uh, with, with Tessa Blanchard not able not being able to be there. Uh, they could have had a match. Uh, that three-way match could have been it was uh, him against Hernandez against Michael Elgin. That could have been for the TNA title. The TNA title could have been up. They could have made it an official title. And apparently they were going to make it an official title. Uh, but that, that main event match could have been for the TNA title. And then Moose would have won. And then he would have officially been the TNA champion. But they decided to go with uh, him um, self-proclaiming himself as a TNA champion. Now, don't get me wrong. He's done a fantastic job. He's done a fantastic job as, as a TNA champion. I, I'm a huge, huge fan of Moose. And... Um, it, is, it would have been good if uh, would be nice if they made it an official title. And who knows with that official title, what what it could have led to? It could have led to a maybe a TNA show with TNA branding. They could have had a second show. It would have been an Impact show, TNA show, and uh, we would have had two shows. And they could have come to a head at, at a major pay per view. Uh, but we we discussed this on on many many podcasts ago. Uh, I'm not really going to get into that, but. That, that was the original plan for the TNA title. So it was coming back. It was coming back as an official title. As an official title for Impact Wrestling. And I still think they should make it an official title for Impact Wrestling. I, I really thought at Slammiversary that uh, Moose was going to have a match. Someone was going to challenge him. Or or, um, or management was going to put him into a match that he was going to say, well, if I win, we need to make the TNA title an official title. I, th- I really thought they were going to do that at Slammiversary. Uh, but, but they're not doing that. Um, he's taking on... As, uh, um, as we know, Tommy Dreamer, and I'm going to get into the Slammiversary matches a little later on, uh, but I, I'd love to see it as an official title. You know, I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in. Uh, Moose, Moose, like I said, has done a fantastic job, and, and hopefully um, shortly uh, down the road, the TNA title will be an official title um, in Impact Wrestling. Uh, so FTR, FTR, Cash Wheeler, and Dax Harwood. They are not signed with Impact Wrestling. Um, I'm sorry. They're not signed with with All Elite Wrestling, AEW. Uh, forgive me there. Um, of, well, of course. Well, I that's actually I'm being truthful. <laughs> they're they're not signed with Impact Wrestling either. But but they're they're in AEW right now. But they're not signed to them. It was a handshake deal, and uh, they said that they uh, they're excited to wrestle elsewhere. They're looking to wrestle elsewhere. And uh, one team on their list that they would like to meet up with are the North. Now that's very very interesting. That's very very. They they could appear wherever they want right now. They could appear wherever they want. There's no contract with AEW. You know, it's just just I think it's just a handshake deal from what I'm reading. Uh, but whether it's a handshake deal or not, but it's there's no signed contract, so they can appear anywhere they want. Which um, you kind of think at Slammiversary. I, I know they're 
they're uh, they're pushing the Good Brothers. Uh, they're they have apparently already signed with Impact Wrestling, and they will be appearing at Slammiversary. But what if, what if Cash Wheeler and Dax Harwood show up at Impact Wrestling? What if what if the North? Uh, I, I I believe the North are going to win. I'll, I'll give that prediction early. I believe the North are going to beat uh, Sammy Callahan and Ken Shamrock. Uh, I don't know if that was the original plans. I think maybe the original plans might have been um, Shamrock and Sammy Callahan, an unlikely team coming together and winning the tag team titles. I don't think that's going to happen. But what if? What if after the North wins? After the North wins, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, they show up. But then the lights go out. Lights go out, and they come back on, and, and Cash Wheeler and Dax Harwood are in the ring. And all three teams are in the ring, and then we have just a Pier 6 brawl between all three teams. What, what if that happens? Just think about it, and it could happen. It could happen. You know, Will it happen? It's unlikely that will happen, but it could happen. There is a chance it could happen. And my gosh, my gosh, I, my, my head would explode. My head would explode if that happened at Slammiversary. So, it's 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 a distinct possibility. They 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 also mentioned them. They 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 would like to get into the ring with um with Anderson and Gallows as well. So coming to um coming to Impact Wrestling, you know, again they're not going to sign a long term deal. They're not going to sign an an, ex, an exclusive contract. It seems like that they want to wrestle wherever they want to wrestle. Uh, so th- I don't think they're going to be signing any exclusive contracts with any promotions, which is a smart thing to do. So they can wrestle for any promotion that they want. Uh, they they talk about possibly going to Japan, um, wherever they want. And but I I'd love it. I would just absolutely would my head would just freaking explode. You know I would absolutely lose it if at Slammiversary, if or if FTR, Gallows and Anderson, and the North. Are all in the ring together? Uh, it's well. It's it's going to be Gallows and uh, Gallows and Anderson in the North are definitely going to be in the ring. They're going to be. They're going to have a stare down. They're going to. They're going to be in the ring together. That that's 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 a certainty. But add add the add, add the element of Cash Wheeler and Dax Harwood. Oof, my gosh, that would be absolutely amazing. I I man, I can't wait for. Uh, I I just I can't wait for Slammiversary. Slammiversary is going to be so so damn exciting that was so damn exciting i can't wait i mean we just saw the uh the last tease uh where somebody was uh, mailing a contract fedexing a contract to um scott demore and scott demore opens it up and someone signed it and he goes oh wow slamversary just got much more exciting uh i don't know if that was word for word but slamversary is going to be much more exciting and, and you think who is that person who is that person you know you could think it's ec3 uh but as somebody, as somebody pointed out, there was an article. The, the I, I don't know who wrote the article, and I, I forget the the website. But there's an article saying that they don't believe it was EC3 mailing uh, that contract because because the person mailing the the contract. <laughs> I'm sorry, this, I think this is hilarious. I just gotta see it. The per, I just gotta say it. the person mailing the contract doesn't have didn't have the chiseled ass cheeks. Of EC3, so it couldn't have been EC3 mailing that, mailing that contract. I, I, you know, I never, uh, I never thought of that. I never <laughs> thought about, you know, zoning in on on what type of ass cheeks the person has <laughs> that's mailing the contract. But that's a that's a good point. That's a good point. The person, the person that was in that video, the, did not have uh, the did not definitely did did not definitely did not have the ass cheeks of EC3. So, so there you go. But I still think um, that EC3 uh, will be showing up at Slammiversary. Uh, but oh, it was CageSideSeats.com. The article was on CageSideSeats.com uh, where uh, the individual um, mentioned uh, the, the ass cheeks of, of, of EC3. Uh, but, uh, but nonetheless, nonetheless, I, I still think he's going to show up at, um, at Slammiversary. And speaking of Slammiversary, the Rascals issued an open challenge. They issued an open challenge at Slammiversary. And a lot of people are saying, oh, this is how the Good Brothers, this is how Gallows and Anderson are coming in uh, to Impact Wrestling. That's what I initially thought too, but BQ, uh, BQ uh, mentioned uh, that um, 
it 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 we're not going to see Gallows and Anderson aren't going to come in and, and go after the Rascals. Uh, why would they go after the Rascals? Uh, he, he indicated that this will probably be the first match, and it's not going to be the Good Brothers. And he's right. I, I, I agree with BQ. I agree with BQ on that 100%. I don't think it's going to be Gallows and Anderson, uh, except in that open challenge. I'm, I'm more along the lines of, of Rhino and Heath Slater will probably... And um, accept that challenge, uh, answer that challenge to the Rascals, or you know, another if if it's not uh, Slater and Rhino, I'm thinking you know they want to make Triple uh, XL, Triple uh, XL a um, a top heel team. That's what it seemed like uh, after the last episode of Impact. Um, they might answer the challenge and uh, just absolutely annihilate the Rascals. Uh, but if I was a betting man, I would probably go with. Um, Rhino and Heath Slater uh, to answer the open challenge of the Rascals. Well, let's uh, let's uh, since we're on the topic of Slamversary, let's 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 run down the matches, and I will give my predictions. I um I won't do a preview. A BQ has done a preview. It was a great preview, and um, it's on the Impact Lounge now. Check it out. BQ uh, doing his uh, preview and predictions for Slamversary. Uh, so I will just give my predictions, and I'll, maybe I'll talk a little bit about the match and what I what I think um, is going to happen or who we may see in the match uh, so we have uh, the main event is the impact world championship uh, which is vacant right now so eddie edwards versus uh trey miguel versus ace austin versus a mystery opponent um i'm with bq on this i think the mystery opponent is going to win the match uh ace austin is a dark horse to win the match uh, but i i'm gonna go with the mystery opponent to win this match it's either gonna be bully ray or Eric Young. That that's my guess there. Bully Ray or Eric Young will be the mystery opponent. Um, for well, actually, you know what? I was just thinking of something. I don't mean to backtrack, for, but the the Rascals Open Challenge. What if it's Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin, the Motor City Machine Guns? That just popped into my head right now. I believe Alex Shelley is a is is a free agent. I believe he's available to wrestle. Actually, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out. Let me uh, check that out real quick. He is Alex Shelley is a free agent. Uh, it's looking at a um, a um, online and as of June 10th, 2020, uh, he says he's a free agent. So what if it's the Motor Mach- Motor City Machine Guns? What if it's Chris Saban and Alex Shelley? That actually that's gonna be my pick. That's my pick right there. I'm saying it's Alex Shelley and Chris Saban. That would be an absolutely terrific match that makes so much sense because if it's if it's Heath Slater and Rhino it's going to just kind of be a squash for them uh, but if it's Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin against against the Rascals those two teams can really go and they could give us an amazing match and that's exactly if, if this is in fact the opening match this is exactly the type of opening match that Impact Wrestling should open with and I'm, I'm going with I'm, I'm changing my mind I'm changing my mind I'm going with Alex Shelley and Chris Saban the Motor City Machine Guns that's going to be that's going to be the first match right there Alex Shelley Chris Saban I'm, I'm get, oh my god I'm getting goosebumps I'm, I'm getting I'm literally getting goosebumps Alex Shelley and Chris Saban return and what an op- what what a just the opening match and what a return what a return to Impact Wrestling in the opening match the Motor City Machine Guns returning to Impact Wrestling. Holy crap. That's that that's it. That's the one. That's the match. That's gonna happen. That is gonna happen. I I'm I am i am literally getting getting goosebumps on my arm thinking about it. But uh, that's gonna be um that's my that's my pick right there. So I, I don't mean to, I didn't mean to cut off. Uh, I know I was talking about the main event, uh, but uh, the Motor City Machine Guns just popped into my head. Uh, so that's that's gonna that team I believe the Motor City Machine Guns are going to answer the open challenge to the Rascals, and they're going to give us one hell of a freaking match. There you go. So back to the main event. The mystery opponent, I think it's going to be Eric Young or, or Bully Ray. And I think uh, whichever one's... I, I, I'm leaning towards Eric Young. And like I said, I think Eric Young is going to win the Impact title uh, with Ace Austin uh, as the Dark Horse. So I'm saying it's going to be Eddie Edwards versus Trey versus Ace Austin versus Eric Young. Um, I'm I'm going with Eric Young, Eric Young with 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 
potentially Bully Ray. I think if it's Bully Ray, I think there's a better chance of Ace Austin winning uh, the Impact title uh, as opposed to Eric Young. I just hope he doesn't return as Super Eric. That's all. Just If you're coming back, do not come back as Super Eric. Uh, so then we have for the, the, for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, uh, Moose versus Tommy Dreamer. It's an old school rules match. Uh, not the opponent that a lot of people were hoping for Moose, but, uh, but I think it's going to definitely lead to a huge return. And that huge return, I really feel, is going to be EC3. Uh, Moose, there's no way Moose is going to lose his match. Moose is going to beat Tommy Dreamer, and he's probably going to give a speech saying that he's the greatest TNA world champion of all time. He's going to go on, and then um, EC, EC3 music's going to hit. He's going to probably have, definitely, not probably, he's definitely going to have new music, the new character, uh, the essential character. And he's going to come out, and uh, the feud between Moose and EC3 uh, will begin. Uh, so that's what I feel is going to happen there. The Impact Knockouts Championship, Jordan Grace versus Diona Prazo. I'm going to go with Diona Prazo. I feel Diona Prazo, even though I have, they haven't announced it, I do believe that she's going to be with Impact Wrestling for a long time, at least two, three years. And I wouldn't be surprised if they announce uh, the signing soon, uh, but I'm going to go with Diona Prazo to uh, defeat Jordan Grace and become the new Impact's, uh, Impact Knockouts Champion. Um... Impact to the uh, X Division Championship. No way Chris Bay beats Willie Mack. No way. No way. Uh, Willie Mack will um, will retain the title. But I do think, I do think that Chris Swan uh, will come. I'm sorry, not Chris Swan. Uh, uh, Rich Swan uh, will come out and um, initially congratulate Willie Mack. But then he will turn heel on Willie Mack, setting up a Willie Mack versus a Rich Swan feud. Uh, so that, uh, I feel... We, we may see um, an, an X Division champion, an, an, an old X Division champion show up, possibly. Uh, but I, I, I really have a show up, and he's going to turn on Willie Mack. The Impact World Tag Team Championship. Uh, the North, Josh Alexander, Ethan Page, one of the best tag teams in the world, against Ken Shamrock and Sammy Callahan. I, like I said before, I think the initial plans were Shamrock and Callahan, the the unlikely team, uh, to defeat the North. Uh, but I don't think it's going to happen um, with um, Gallows and Anderson coming in, and maybe the Cash Wheeler and Dax Harwood. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's definitely Gallows and Anderson coming in, and uh, the North are going to defeat um, Shamrock and Callahan. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, like Callahan turns on Shamrock, or or like if the mystery opponents in the World Championship um, Impact World Championship uh, match is Bully Ray. I wouldn't be surprised if Eric Young shows up and attacks Sammy Callahan because I know they had a little Twitter thing going on um, a couple weeks back. Uh, I think Callahan had challenged Young, or Young challenged Callahan, or one of the two. Uh, so I'll, that could happen in that match. Uh, lots of possibilities, but but the the I'm I'm certain that whatever happens in this match, um, we're going to see the North and Gallows and Anderson, uh, the Good Brothers, in the ring together, facing off against each other, just in just in a stare down stare down, possibly exchanging blows, uh, but uh, setting up a feud between the North and Gallows and Anderson. Uh, then you have the gauntlet match, uh, the women's gauntlet match. The winner becomes the number one contender for the Impact Knockout Championship. Alicia Edwards versus Havoc versus Kira Hogan versus Kimberly versus Kylie Ray versus Nevea versus Madison Rain versus Rosemary versus Susie versus Tasha Steeles versus Taya Valkyrie. And I'm sure we will see uh, maybe one or two more names added. I, I, I saw the name ODB floating around, possibly being in this match. I wouldn't be surprised if we see ODB. As long as she doesn't win the match, I don't mind if she's in it. Okay, as long as she doesn't win the match, I don't mind if ODB is in this match. And I also believe that we're going to see Sue Young in this match as well. Uh, I think um, Susie is going to get eliminated uh, in the Scarlet match, and then she's going to go back. I'm, I'm thinking Susie is going to come out initially early, get eliminated, and go back, quickly get that Sue Young makeup on, and uh, come back as Sue Young uh, later. Uh, late uh, in the match, uh, we saw a little bit of Su Young on the last episode of uh, Impact Wrestling. She kind of got the twitch after she won uh, that uh, that 
a huge tag team match. Uh, but if I have to pick a winner, I have to pick a winner. I am going to go. See, I, I'm, I'm thinking Kylie Ray is going to win uh, or Kiera Hogan deserves it. Kiera Hogan deserves it. I, I would like to see Kiera Hogan or Kylie Ray win. Uh, if I have to pick one of the two, I'm probably going to go with... I'm going with... It's it's tough. It's tough. I, 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 I'm going to go with Kylie Ray. I'm going to go with Kylie Ray uh, setting up a uh, Diona Prazo uh, Kylie Ray uh, uh, feud. But Kara Hogan deserves it. It's either I wouldn't be I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Kara Hogan wins. So I'm going to say either Kara Hogan or Kylie Ray. I'm going to go either or. I'm not going to pick one. I'm going to go either or. Kylie Ray or or Kara Hogan uh, will win the um, the gauntlet match at uh, Slammiversary. So uh, Slammiversary is going to be a tremendous tremendous show. Tremendous, tremendous show. I just, I can't wait. I can't wait. The world is changing for Impact Wrestling, and uh, it begins at Slammiversary. It begins at Slammiversary. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, so uh, before I wrap this up, before I wrap this up, there was one really stupid, stupid comment. One really, really dumb comment somebody made um, uh, on Impact Wrestling. Uh, it was during the there was there was a, um, a Facebook post by Impact Wrestling, uh, the Triple XL, the Triple Triple XL versus Deaners match, um, which uh, the Deaners won by the Triple XL. Uh, they turned heel and then took out the Deaners. So some one some some guy some guy he writes uh, that Triple uh, XL is is heavy machinery light. With less with less athleticism and no personality, and the Deaners are a bargain bin Briscoes, and you can find them at Walmart for five ninety nine. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> that was that was deep. That was deep. He he went on. He went deep with that one. You know, find them at Walmart for five ninety nine. Uh, but let's 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 analyze this. So, so it says Triple XL, um, AC Romero, and uh, and um, Larry D. Uh, are heavy machinery light, heavy machinery uh, NXT WWE tag team. You know, first of all, I've I've watched a few of their matches uh, when they were in NXT. I uh, haven't seen any anything they've done in WWE, uh, but I, I I watched a few of their matches last year, a few years ago in NXT, and they they never really appealed to me. They, I didn't think I really never thought they were any good at all. They just they didn't appeal to me. I, I was not a fan of theirs, and I I didn't think their in ring work was, was was like I said was very good at all. Uh, so to heavy heavy machinery saying that they're heavy machinery like does, does this guy really think that Scott Demore and Don Callis or or um, were brainstorming one day and uh, Scott Demore said you know Don you know what we need in Impact Wrestling you know what we need in Impact Wrestling we need our version of heavy machinery that that's what we need and don callis don callis responds like you know something scott that's absolutely what we need we need our own version of heavy machinery so why don't we why don't we get ac romero and larry d put them together as a tag team we can sign both of them and then we will have our version of of heavy machinery that's brilliant yeah that's brilliant because because every promotion needs their own version of heavy machinery because they are just absolute legends in professional wrestling. Triple XL is not anything like heavy machinery. Well, all, they're, both teams are, are large, uh, are large. So, so you could you could you could make the comp- make the comp- comparison that way, but. Uh, Triple XL has nothing to do with heavy machinery. If you're just basing it, which this guy is, you're just basing it on on the size of, of all four men. So why stop there? Why not? Why not say uh, Triple XL is is um, the Maguire brothers light? The Maguire brothers are. I don't know if anyone is <laughs> familiar with the Maguire brothers, but they were a a a um, heavy heavy set um, tag team. They were twins, and they were like 700 pounds in in the 70s, and um, uh, but anyway, why not just call them Maguire Brothers Light? Uh, why, why, why do they have to be heavy, heavy machinery? Maybe heavy machinery are are the Maguire Brothers Light, or maybe heavy machinery is um, 
I, I can't think of any. And, and maybe it's their, uh, and I can't think of any heavy set teams right now, any of those. Anyway, but uh, it's a stupid comparison. It's this is just a WWE fan, a WWE troll who's uh, trying to um, trying to knock Triple uh, XL because, because Heavy Machinery is such a great tag team. And like I said, every promotion wants to have their own version of 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 um of heavy machinery but what that like why why uh, in uh, TJP or oh, why why not just say oh follow by TJP they're they're Andre the Giant and Haku Light why not why not just uh, or they're they're Yokozuna and and Owen Hart Light well why 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 stop there you know you might as well if you're going to make the comparison you might as well just <laughs> just go and uh you know run down every uh every tag team in in Impact Wrestling and find a team that's that's similar to them in the history of the WWE, and then you could compare the two teams. You know, it's, it's dumb comment, dumb comment. And then he compares the Deaners, says the Deaners are a bargain bin Briscoes, and you can find them at Walmart for five ninety nine. Ooh, ooh uh, yeah, I'm gonna run to Walmart with with six bucks, and I'm gonna I'm gonna look for the Deaners. <laughs> I'm gonna purchase. I'm gonna purchase the Deaners at Walmart for six bucks. You know, okay. You you again. You can make the comparison between the two, the Briscoes. You know, the Deaners. You know, Briscoes, Country Boys. Uh, but you know, Cody Deaner's been around for for quite a long time. It's not like Cody Deaner just started this character. Cody Deaner has been around for quite a long time, and uh, the Briscoes have their thing. The Deaners have their thing. And again, it's it's not a case of. Oh, of Scott Demore and Don Callis getting together and saying, "Oh, we have to come up with our own version of the Briscoes." It's not that at all. Just, just appreciate the teams for who they are and which promotions that they work in, and and don't be a jerk. And don't be a jerk and feel you that you need to compare them. Um, well, I was gonna say the WWE teams. The Briscoes, of course, are a Ring of Honor team, who, by the way, have turned down the WWE because they didn't want to go there. Uh, but uh, you don't have to compare teams. Just the Deaners are a very talented team. They're the Deaners. The Briscoes are a very talented team. They're the Briscoes. If you go to the Briscoes and you say you think the Deaners are uh, are copying you, I'm sure they're they're. Uh, well, I don't know what they would say, but odds are they're gonna say no, no. Uh, Cody Deaner's been doing uh, been doing his thing um, for for a long time. Uh, so uh, that's that's probably what their answer would be. So uh, don't be a schmuck and and uh, and uh, you know compare the two teams and and you know make light of of. Um, of the Dino put down the Deaners uh, as a uh, inferior team uh, to a, a tag team that's similar to them. Uh, but anyway, on that note, I just want to say thank you very much for listening today. And uh, don't forget Slammiversary. I got my uh, Slammiversary review show is coming up uh, the day after Slammiversary is when I'm going to record it. I can't wait. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, you're not going to want to miss Slammiversary. Lots of surprises coming up. And it's going to be a, a – it's not – it's – it's not going to be. It is a great time right now uh, to be an Impact Wrestling fan. So on that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for listening. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.